Hello everybody, uh, this is a bonus lecture and we are going to talk about amplifiers. So uh, this week is a Valentine's Day week here in the United States of America. So there's a, a lot of countries, I guess, that um, have this holiday. Uh, it's basically a holiday for, you know, your girlfriend or your wife. Anyway, so if you are in the United States or a country that celebrates it, do not forget. Um, for me, it's fun because I have a little daughter, so I took her to a daddy-daughter uh, dance, and I'll take her to another one, so that's kind of a fun thing to do if you have little daughters on uh, Valentine's Day. Go with little dances. Uh, anyway, so I've, you know, I've been trying, uh, normally uh, I would have put out a bonus video a couple weeks ago, but I've been really trying to think of something uh, useful and interesting, uh, and again, we, you know, we only have an hour to do it, and uh, so... Uh, what I was thinking is a lot of people have been uh, asking me about amplifiers, uh, and so uh, I thought it would be maybe a fun uh, project just to build an amplifier in real time uh, so you can see the thought process and uh, the steps that we go through. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to build an amplifier. Now, we're not going to build anything crazy. Uh, in one hour, we're going to build a very, 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 very simple amplifier. But I'm going to talk to you about my thought process, some of the things that you're thinking about, so that you could build more complex amplifiers, all right? So um, let's just dive right into this. Uh, so let's say that you, uh, you, know, you build some project uh, and uh, it has maybe an audio output, right? But the audio output does not have any power. So now let's talk about this for a minute, what this means by power. Uh, now, if you're watching a bonus video, you could have skipped the entire course and just watching this bonus video. So obviously, if you take the class, you're going to know a lot of these things that I'm talking about. But when you're talking about amplification, there's three kinds of amplification. We can amplify voltage, we can amplify current, we can amplify both, which would be a power amplifier. So when you're doing uh, a uh, audio amplifier, typically we want to uh, definitely amplify power, and many times we want to also amplify uh, voltage. Now, uh, a lot of times you may not need to amplify voltage. For example, say if you have a 5-volt system or even a 3.3-volt system and you uh, generate an audio output, uh, that audio output is already going to be swinging 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Uh, most of the time that's enough to drive a speaker no problem. The problem is there's no current to that drive, right? So you've got the voltage but no current, so you need more current. So that's where the power amplification uh, comes in with the audio amplifier. Now, many audio amplifiers also have voltage amplification, so you can take a tiny signal, maybe a millivolt level signal, and amplify it 10, 50, 100 times. So those are some of the things that you're looking for in amplification. You definitely want power amplification, meaning I want to amplify current and potentially also voltage, but I definitely need current because we want to put out watts or fractions of watts or many watts when we're talking about amplifiers, right? Audio amplifiers. So a typical audio amplifier, uh, something uh, in a small handheld device, like say, you know, uh, like this phone, maybe this uh, little speaker puts out oh, maybe 500 milliwatts, right? 200, 500 milliwatts, uh, I doubt it puts out a watt, all right? And then uh, you'll see these big giant uh, stereo systems, maybe it puts out 500 watts or 1,000 watts, you know, maybe at a concert, crazy big stuff, right? All right, now, so then we say, okay, hey, we wanna build uh, an amplifier, and then you could go look and you could say, you know, what are some amplifiers, little breakout boards uh, so that you can play with using experiments. So if you go on Amazon and type in audio amplifier breakout board, we can go through here and you can see there's uh, various small devices here and you kind of look through them and you can see uh, what's going on here. So for example, uh, we look at some of these uh, that came up in the first search. Some of those are fairly complicated. Like you can see, this is uh, a very nice one, uh, but some of the simpler ones like this uh, right here, we come in here and we see, okay, so uh, 1.4 watts into 8 ohms, what that means is it can drive 1.4 watts of power into an 8 ohm load or an 8 ohm speaker, right? And then if you look at it, it's just basically one chip, and then this is uh, potentially a regulator, I'm not sure. Let's get another view here. And so very, very simple. Uh, and we can see it's based on this particular IC, this TPA uh, 2005 D1 which uh, I know is a Texas Instruments uh, amplifier. So we could go look this uh, IC up and, and say, let's take a look at this and just basically copy something like that. So we can do that, and we might do that, right? 
Again, I'm doing this in real time with you right now as we do it. Now, oh, here's another one. This is now this is uh, shockingly expensive, actually, uh, and this is based on this uh, PAM 8302 2.5 watt single uh, channel Class D audio amplifier. So this Class D, if you don't know anything about amplifiers, then uh, you're going to be like, what does that even mean? And even if you know uh, about amplifiers, you may not be familiar with D for digital. And uh, we're going to talk about that also. But for now, uh, we're just we're just shopping. We're just you know looking around. And so this PAM 8302, I uh, I've used these PAM chips before. This is from I'm trying to remember what company makes these PAM chips. It is, let's see here, it's, is it Diodes Inc? Yeah, yeah, it's Diodes Inc. So uh, the company, uh, Diodes Incorporated, they have a whole line of these audio uh, processors or audio amplifiers uh, that start with PAM, which I don't know what the PAM stands for. But anyway, they have some really good ones that are fairly simple. And uh, so this is a, a good company to get simple amplifiers from. Now, Texas Instruments and Maxim uh, have a whole line, a whole slew of amplifiers, like, I don't know, dozens, maybe even over 100. Uh, Diodes Inc. does not have that many. But they have some simpler ones that are easier to get up and running. All right, So we want things that are fairly simple. So here's another uh, possibility. The 8302A is a 2.5 watt Class D. So there's another uh, possible opportunity uh, for something that we uh, might want to use. All right, so let's go back here. So we saw, you know, there's this PAM IC and uh, this TI uh, IC. Let's see what else. This, this thing right here is more complicated. This, I think, is a uh, audio file, uh, file playback IC. There's another PAM 8302. Now, uh, 80, uh, 8403. And a lot of times, uh, when you see these numbers increase, it might mean it's stereo, it might mean it's more power, et cetera, that's all. Uh, and uh, another thing that you can kind of glean from this is what manufacturers uh, make ICs and then what are people using to make these little kits? Because they went through the same process we, so like here, here's another TPA 3116, two by 50 watts. So now this one's interesting because this is a very high output amplifier. So it's two channels by 50 watts, class D. That's a big, powerful amplifier, right? So that's no joke right there. So someone has to go through this process. Now, the process of looking for these things is uh, very time consuming when you go to the uh, manufacturer websites, all right? Uh, let's see, another PAM uh, 8302, and there's a 2005 again. All right, so now what I want to show you is, so you could go on uh, Amazon, you could look this up. You could also go to uh, SparkFun, which is another site, and I'm trying to keep an eye on the uh, time here, because we do not have a lot of it. Uh, audio amp, let's see what comes up here. Audio amplifier, and... Come on, Spark Fun, render, render the page. So there's one with the 2005 uh, that we just saw. Let's see here. Anything else exciting? Uh, and okay, here's one here. Oh, this one's I squared S. All right. So now uh, you can either uh, drive these amplifiers with an analog signal, which is kind of what you would be used to, or I squared S. And my course is not a digital course. It's a basic electronics course and PCB design. But I talk about I squared S a little bit. I squared S is a, uh, a serial protocol similar to I squared C. And uh, these things stand for inner IC uh, communications, I squared C. And I squared S is uh, inner IC uh, sound, I think. or it, it, It's a sound version of I squared C, basically. So you can digitally sound, uh, send information to an IC and amplify it so that you aren't working with analog signals that can degrade. You're working with digital representations. So this is nice if you want to do an I squared S amplifier and if you have a microcontroller or a computer or something that has an I squared S output. But we're not going to do that. Nevertheless, Max, remember I said Maxim uh, Semiconductor has a lot of audio amps, and this is uh, you know one of them right here, this 98357. So anyway, uh, let's go back. And then, of course, uh, Adafruit is another uh, great website that has a lot of cool stuff. And if we look under audio amp here, and then uh, there's, a, there's quite a few of them, actually. And so again, this is a great way. So there's a TPA 2016. And this one's got I squared C control. So that means that you need an I squared C 
bus to control it and set the registers in it. So that's, that's a little bit more complicated than we want to deal with. So this PAM 8302, so this PAM series is, you know, looking good. And then here's other I squared S, we don't want to mess with that. Uh, and then there's 14 pages that probably degrades into other things that are not uh, the search terms. Uh, here's one. This one is 2 by 3.7, and this is this max 98306. And then here's this max 9744. Let's take a look at this one. Let's take a look at this one right here. All right, so uh, 9744, for example, kind of we can look here at it. So this is a fairly complicated chip. He has a you know a good amount of support hardware around it, a lot of stuff, and we we, we may not want to get that complicated to do whatever we're going to do. But again, we're just kind of looking and getting an idea now. So we want to make an audio amplifier. So you say, hey Andre, uh, why not just use uh, an LM386? Right? You may have heard of this. We could do this, but I mean. Uh, these LM386s are very, very, very old. Now, even though this says 2004, this thing is predates this. So this is kind of a very crude uh, audio amplifier, uh, IC. Uh, they're a buck. They're real simple to use. They have a wide uh, supply voltage range. So, and, and here's what the circuit looks like inside of an LM386. So you could just make something out of this. It's got an input, a couple uh, other pins here, uh, the output, ground, uh, power supply, and then it's also got, you can set the gain in this a little bit. And if we go down here and look down here, you can see what it looks like, minus, plus, ground, gain, gain, bypass, these different uh, inputs. And we can look at some of the uh, circuits of this. There's kind of this functional diagram. Here's an example circuit. So you can see with the uh, LM386, for example, you can make a, you know, a good audio amplifier. And the input comes here, and then this is kind of a volume control, uh, control using this potentiometer as a volume control. The non-inverting input is grounded, and then uh, some of these other pins do other things like set gain and whatnot. The one big problem with using an LM386 is it needs an AC coupled output, um, and you need uh, a very large output capacitor, usually 100 to 200, 300 microfarads to block uh, DC so that only the AC signal gets through here. And you want like very low frequencies, like 10 hertz and up. So you have to put a big capacitor here. And a lot of people don't want to put a big capacitor. That's a big part, especially if you're making a surface mount uh, board. Nevertheless, the LM386 uh, is surely uh, not bad. And you could always make an amplifier out of this. This is specifically designed uh, for amplifiers, the LM386 and uh, amplification circuits. And here's another example with gain 200. And again, this is voltage gain 200. So the voltage gain is 200. Then the final output, right, will be whatever that voltage is uh, through whatever this impedance is. And this impedance is a speaker that will draw as much current as it needs. So the final output will be the voltage uh, times the current, obviously, right? OK, and just some more, some examples setting gain with these gain settings. I, I believe pin 1 and pin 8 uh, help set gain. Anyway. The uh, data sheet on this is not short, and uh, I think it's about, let's see, does this, uh, yeah, 29 pages, yeah, 29, 30 pages. So you could use an LM386. Now, another thing that you could do if you want to make an audio amplifier is you could use uh, an op amp, right? No one said you can't just use an op amp. And again, uh, I'm showing you, uh, you know, parts that are uh, very common and kind of older, uh, because they're ubiquitous. So the LM741 is kind of a very, very basic operational amplifier. I would never, ever use this any product or project I ever made professionally because it's just too slow, too old, too everything. Everything now is a thousand times better than this on every single factor. Power, noise, uh, amplification, linearity, I could go on and on. But it's simple. And this is kind of, you know, if you start learning about electronics and you want an operational amplifier, hey, people say use an LM741. Uh, Just like for transistors, I'll tell you use a 3904, 3906, 2222A, etc. in the course. Same thing here. And we don't talk about uh, operational amplifiers in the uh, course other than a uh, little couple anecdotal things where I talk about them just for a few minutes. But operational amplifiers are basically black boxes that are idealized amplifiers. And... Uh, you can set them up in different ways to kind of uh, create all kinds of different amplification and functional uh, analog operations. Amplification is one of them. This uh, configuration right here is a uh, non-inverting uh, amplifier uh, configuration with it. There's countless uh, configurations that have different properties, and they have really cool properties. There are whole books, thousands, 
hundreds, hundreds of books on uh, operational amplifiers. And if you just Google for operational amplifier circuits, uh, there's tons of them. Uh, you can find PDFs from Texas Instruments and other companies that make really good uh, uh, white papers that are hundreds of pages long describing how to do circuits with op amps. So we could just use an op amp. There's no reason uh, we couldn't just do that. All right. But again, uh, when we do things ourselves, then we have to understand what we're doing. So we have to understand things like filtering and and um, power amplification and so forth. So in this case, we just kind of want to use a chip, right? All right. So you just want to use a chip. Okay. Now let's go a little bit farther. So now we want to use a chip. So we go to a place like DigiKey, and uh, I've typed in uh, audio amplifiers here, and I think, yeah, 5900. All right. So then we can go through here. And we can say, okay, you know, where to even begin, right? Okay, there's a lot of these different parameters here. Okay, the first thing is, before we do anything, uh, we need to understand what we're looking for, all right? So let's, first, let's say, hey, I want audio amplifiers in stock. I want it Rojas, uh, bulk or cut tape, okay? I don't want, care about the series. I want it to be active. This type thing, we don't understand this yet. I'm going to talk to you about this in a minute, all right? So let's go there. And now let's apply filters, all right? Give that a second. Okay, then we have max power output. Uh, we're not going to play with that yet. We're not going to play with uh, voltage supply and all that yet. But I do want it to be a surface mount uh, chip. Okay, so surface mount, surprisingly, there's not that many through hole. There's almost no through hole. Okay, now it's saying the output type. All right, and we can say a one channel, one channel with two channel stereo. We can say two channel stereo, all these different uh, variations. So we, we kind of need to know uh, what matters here to us, all right? Before we go do that, let's go talk about the uh, class of amplifier. All right, let's go talk about the class of amplifier. So I think I have something open here, yeah. All right, so when you're talking about amplifier class, uh, there are uh, many, many classes now. There, And here's a little chart. You can see there's A, there's AB, there's B, there's C, and then there's you know, D, E, F, G, H, I, T. There's all these other uh, classes which have just kind of happened uh, recently in the digital world to describe those kind of classes. But uh, what I'm going to talk about is these simple, these simple uh, amplifier classes. So uh, an A amplifier <coughs> amplifies the entire signal. All right, A amplifier amplifies the entire signal. It's very linear, and I think there's a circuit of it here. Yeah. So again, if you don't, uh, if you haven't taken the course, you're not going to understand this too much. But uh, in this case, we bring the sig signal in here, we capacitively couple it, and then uh, this transistor is biased into the operating. Uh, it's operating, right? So it's biased. It's running, and then we take a small signal, and then we get out a larger signal here. So the transistor is always on. So here's the input, and here's the output. So we get an amplified version of the signal. The transistor is always on. So even when there's no signal in here on the input. The transistor is still running. It's running hot. It's burning energy, right? This gives you a very linear, uh, great amplifier, but it burns a lot of energy. So if you want an amplifier that gives you the best audio, right, then a lot of people just stick with a class A and they'll just burn energy. Now, so then we said, hey, let's come up with another one and um, let's, uh, let's see if we can, you know, reduce this power. So then there's these other two uh, classes here, this A, B, and, and B class. So now if we come down here, Take a look here. So we have this uh, class B amplifier. So then the class B amplifier, how it works is there are two transistors. So one transistor uh, turns on when you have a positive going signal. The other transistor turns on when you have a negative going signal. All right. So uh, what's happening here is uh, when you have the uh, input signal come in, you get your output signal. <clears throat> uh, and th this isn't showing the entire signal. You get your output signal. Uh, which is uh, turning on uh, each one of these transistors uh, depending on which wave or which half wave of the input, right? The problem with this is, uh, the problem with this is, is that as these things turn on, all right, they need to, uh, there's a, a, a portion where they turn on so you get kind of this discontinuity uh, at the at the middle point. So in other words, as the signal goes up and goes down, there's a little amount of voltage that gets lost turning on each one of these transistors until you start getting amplification. All right. So you get this nonlinearity. All right. So then we kind of mix these two things, and then there's this AB. So what AB does is it uh, 
it overlaps the uh, on portion, all right? So waste a little bit of energy. So if you go to AB here, uh, is hopefully there's an AB, yeah. So in AB, what we do is, is we uh, bias these transistors in such a way that we turn them on uh, so that as these transistors are conducting and they're making this crossover point, there's a crossover, there's an overlap so that we get the signal out, but we don't get those discontinuities. So we get a better um, uh, linearity in the, in the output signal, all right? And what that does is it burns a little bit of energy, but for it, we gain uh, a better signal. So the bottom line is, <clears throat> is that if we're looking for transistor amplifiers, we are interested in an A or an AB. We don't, we're not interested in B. Uh, we're not interested in C. And then over here are these digital amplifiers. Let's take a look at those. So now we can convert the signals. The chips can convert the signals into a pure uh, digital uh, signal. If they do that, they start off the first one's a D. And if I come down here, where are we? Yeah. So here's where it starts to talk about this. So a class D amplifier is basically a nonlinear switching amplifier or a PWM amplifier. All right. And then, and then from that uh, it, there's all kinds of variants of it, F, G, I, all these different things, which are uh, more or less fairly arbitrary. They just kind of started coming up with these as companies invented these things. But the bottom line is these are all uh, digital versions of analog amplifiers. So you can read through here, like a D amplifier is basically this PWM, pulse width modulation amplifier. So it's completely in a digital domain, all right? And they can, you know, theoretically reach 100% efficiently. And then class F, uh, both efficiency and output using harmonic resonance, you know, there's all these kind of crazy things that they try to get better performance, lower power, right? So what we're looking for is either A, AB, or if it's a, a digital amplifier, we'll go for a D. Now that digital doesn't mean that it necessarily will take a digital signal. It just means that internally it, it, it uh, converts the signal into a digital signal, amplifies it, and then converts it back into an analog signal using uh, this technique uh, for the output, and, and that's why it's called the class D or F or G or whatever amplifier. All right, so that's the type of amplifier. Okay, so given that, let's go back to our search. So we like A, we like B, all right, and then, all, in fact, we like all these. All these will do, all right? Notice there's no B and there's no C, right? We, no one wants those. Okay, so let's go ahead, oops, clear that. All right, and then we, uh, we've already applied our fills. Let's do that again, just for kicks. Okay, now, uh, so now we got to talk about, uh, do we want to amplify headphones, or do we, we want to amplify just uh, speakers kind of thing, all right? And do we want it single, mono, or stereo, all right? So um, let's go ahead and let's make this stereo, all right? So we want two-channel stereo, and this says one mono or two-channel stereo, one mo mono with mono headphones and stereo headphones, all this different kind of thing. I just want to stick to two-channel stereo, all right, and... In fact, and I don't even want headphones. Let's not mess with that. Let's just go two-channel stereo. Done. Apply filters. Okay. All right, here we go. Now, let's go and sort by price. You know, I'm always concerned about price. All right. Now, let's see what we came through here. Oh, look at that. Check that out. There's that PAM 8403 came up, right? There's a PAM 8406. Here's uh, an interesting chip. So this is AB, two channel, 2.2 to 5 volts, uh, 68 cents. That's pretty cheap. Uh, and does it say what the, it doesn't say what the wattage is. Let's go take a look at this one right here, this NC uh, on semiconductor. And then of course, like I said, the big, you know, the big companies will have tons of these kinds of chips, but you'll, you'll see outliers from other companies that have a few uh, ICs. Piece of advice, if you're building and designing a product where you're building millions of something, be careful. If you find some, uh, you know, company that, uh, now on semiconductor is a very large company, but maybe their uh, their core strength isn't audio amplifiers. Maybe they got just one or two, right? But they've got 50,000 of some other kind of chip that they design. I'm, I feel good about buying one of those other chips, right? But if they've only got a couple audio amplifiers, it's not real important to them long-term, their roadmap long-term. So I really don't want to buy those chips because if I go build a product with 100, 1,000, 10,000, a million, 10 million, 100 million units, right? Ideally, hopefully. I don't want to be stuck with a company that's like, ah, we're not into this anymore. We're not going to build this chip anymore. So be careful. Pick chips that you can find a lot of, and it's a, a core strength of the particular company. Okay? All right. So this, uh, uh, whatever this is here, let's go take a look at this data sheet. 
see what we're doing here. And this is what I do. This is the process, right? And I want you to see this. So no cap, right? So this has something to do with no capacitors, I would imagine. I, 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 I've probably seen this chip before, but I've never used this. Pop free, it just means it doesn't uh, pop, uh, make popping sounds uh, when there's transitions uh, in the audio. When the audio turns on, turns off, a lot of uh, audio amplifiers will pop and click. It's very annoying. All right, so it says from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz is the uh, flat frequency response, meaning from 20 to 20 kilohertz, it will amplify the same way and doesn't have a frequency dependent amplification, which of course you don't want in an amplifier. It works from 2.2 to 5 volts. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, this PSSRR, uh, this is the power supply rejection ratio, 90 decibels, which means that as the power supply is all over the place, the audio will not uh, hear it and adjustable gain from one volt to volt to 10 volt to volt. So all this means is basically one to 10 for the voltage gain, all right? And there it is, looks pretty simple. <clears throat> so this is not bad. Let's see if um, there is a schematic. I like looking at schematics because that kind of shows you what they think you're supposed to do with the chip. And some equations here, resistor divider probably for gain or something. Uh, this, is a, this is for shutdown, but okay, that's something else. All right, and yeah, so as you can see, so this, this basically is a very uh, simplistic uh, amplifier. So here's a differential mode version of it, and here's a inverting uh, configuration using it. So it's basically like an op amp. It's a very specific kind of op amp. So that's what this thing is. It's like an op amp. You can see it even has a symbol of an op amp. So um, this is a, it's like the LM386 uh, that we're looking at, or the 741, the LM741. It's just kind of an op amp, all right? So uh, that's a possibility. We could use that, but I want something a little bit more like a, a black box, an audio amplifier. So let's, let's move on, all right? Let's see here. Uh, we got this PAM8403. Now, we saw that there was that 8402, I believe, was the other one. So this might be interesting. I don't want to mess with anything that's a BGA, ball grid array. I can solder it, but a lot of people won't be able to. So we're going to do this surface mount. So this 8403, let's take a look at this one. All right, this is 3 watt. This doesn't look too bad. Let's see what we're doing here. And this is, you know, and if you've watched the videos and you know how I do this, this is a painstaking process of figuring out what to put into things. We're just, we're sitting here looking at some basic chips. If we were doing this professionally, I might have to review 100, 200, 300 ICs, meaning I got to look at 200, 300 data sheets. Then I might pick 10 of them that I like. Then I might have to get 10 samples. Then I might have to build 10 boards or get 10 dev kits and listen to it and look at its performance. All of that could take hundreds of hours just for one chip that I'm going to put into a final design. And a final design might have 10, 50, 100 chips, right? So this is a long process, but this is how it's properly done. So you're just not picking random things that other people pick. Like we can go on Amazon and look what someone else did, but here's the process where we're doing it ourselves, right? Okay, so if we look at the design here, so now you can see <clears throat> this is a little bit more of a black box. Um, so one thing is uh, we've got a couple power supplies here. We got to look here because it might require two different power supplies. That would be bad, um, which is more complicated for our little board. But uh, here, uh, this uh, uh, input left, input right. Zoom in a little bit. Input left, input right. These are capacitively coupled through small capacitors, 0.47. I can deal with that. This has got a, now here's an interesting, look up here. So here on this PVDD, uh, 470 microfarads is the recommended uh, bypass capacitor. Why is it so big? Well, I'll tell you why. Audio amplifiers are gonna pull an enormous amount of current, right? Now, we saw the other thing where we had the capacitors and the output to the speaker. Those were for filtering on the LM386. We don't like that, but we don't mind if there's big bypass capacitors here, it, and they're just required, because when you pull so much current, you need to get it from someplace. If you run back to the power supply over the impedance of the, of the lines to the power supply, you're going to get a voltage drop. So you put a big capacitor at the chip, 100 microfarad, 200 microfarad, 400 microfarad, 1,000 microfarad, so that you can get that current, that charge that you need. So this is very common. All right. Anyway, you've got a shutdown pin, a mute pin a bunch of grounds, and then we basically got these two outputs. So this looks to me like a very simple uh, uh, IC and uh, input left, input right, stereo input. These are reference to ground, all right? I don't see a gain control, don't see a gain control. So if we back out here and we see here internal reference, connect a bypass capacitor, mute, these are just digital lines. 
uh, mute active low and then <clears throat> shut down just uh, shuts the whole thing down for power active low all right and let's see if there's anything else interesting here bunch of charts again I would read this very carefully kind of here's a block diagram of their uh, whatchamacallit uh, operating voltage is 5.5 and the PAM 84 is part for it should be noticed that the voltage of four new drive okay so this is battery uh, works with LC should be connected to speak before it's powered on all right and so uh, this is talking about here's like the uh, whatever their output is and they've got a filtering system on it also just to filter some of the stuff we don't care too much about that uh, let's see here let's see maximum gain as shown in the block diagram the 8403 has two internal amplifier stages the first stage gain is externally configurable while the second stage is internally fixed the closed uh, loop gain of the first stage is set by selecting the ratio of RF to RI while the second stage gain is fixed at two times okay so we can't play with this two times but we can play with this RF to RI but my question is where is this RF and I which usually is uh, feedback and input so let's go back to the design here the little a schematic that they did so here here let me zoom this a little bit for you so here is this ri uh, that they're talking about so this this is our input so then this rf we kind of need to, to figure out where that rf is right where is that rf so that's where the gain is getting set so i can sit here let's search for rf and uh, picking up just words here all right <clears throat> selecting the ratio of RF to RI this is going to show you the average gain but we still don't know where this RF is uh, in the actual design so sets a maximum RF of 142 a minimum of 18 okay so that tells us the range that we can select here that's great but we still don't know where we put this uh, RF how is it getting this this is showing some um, filtering that you might want to add if you're having noise problems so on this one right here I like this but I'm not clear where the feedback resistor is on each of these channels all right and here's the input here's the input and this is actually so see this right here these are feedback resistors this one and this one there's two stages this one and this one see this attenuation decoder and this is connected here this is connected here mute but I don't see how to set it so we're, we'd have to figure that out right and this is why this stuff takes time right we're already 30 minutes in so we got to move on okay so that's a possibility this Pam uh, Pam IC okay uh, all right so let's skip through the Pam things we've kind of looked at the Pammy stuff and uh, so this 80 so I've looked at this 8406 before what were we just looking at we were looking at an 8403 uh, 8406 now this is class D and a B this is uh, two channel five watt times two let's take a look at this one so I've looked at this at some point and let's see why I liked it is this anything okay so the Pam uh, 8406 offers low THD that's a stands for uh, total harmonic distortion and that uh, is a measure of uh, noise between harmonics um, during the amplification uh, and and you know all you know all, all these different chips depending on what you're doing have a whole language of their own that you have to learn what all these acronyms mean and and so forth so uh, you can't know everything uh, so you got to read through this so five watts uh, two ohm load uh, three watts at a four ohm load okay so this looks this looks fine now let's go over here so we see our block diagram we're always interested in the block diagram now if you look at this high and low so this is interesting so this allows us uh, on this mode switch to put it in high which is class D digital or low which is class a B it's stereo output uh, notice on this one they use much smaller uh, bypass capacitors and then uh, again there's this RN and we're not sure about this whole gain thing so let's just search for gain and RL and let's see let's see uh, so it works in DX should be connected uh, one should not make so this is very similar to the other one and we're not quite sure we're not quite the PAM sets maximum RF equals what minimum RI equals this so the closed loop gain is 24 I'm not sure if it's set itself or if we set this RF uh, 
doesn't look like we do. So again, you know, I'm already confused by a little bit of this chip, and maybe I don't want to figure this out, right? So let's keep going. Okay, ISSI is a, is a good company, but they don't make a whole lot of amplifiers. All right, uh, we can look at this, 2.6. And, and again, you just got to go through this, and this is a huge pain, right? And then down here, we're to the, now we're starting to get a little bit more expensive. Now this one, new. So two-channel stereo, 2.4 to 5, class AB. Eh, let's take a look at this uh, Max 4062 40, 40, uh, chip. Okay. All right, so this is interesting. So this one right here, this looks like it's a microphone amplifier. Differential microphone, yeah, it's a microphone preamplifier. Okay, so that, that's cool, fine, whatever. The search came up with something that we weren't interested in. All right, and then here's some of these TPA chips. Now, notice it's got, you know, a good amount of pins here. Now, if you're afraid of a lot of pins on a surface mount, you know, we can avoid that. Uh, so maybe let's go take a look at this um, uh, DRV, I've actually, this chip I'm familiar with also. Let's take a look at, where did it go? This uh, 4, this one doesn't look too bad. This LM4666, Class D, 2 channel, 1.2 watt. Not a whole lot of wattage there, though. Let's go take a look at that. Okay. Okay, uh, the LM4666 is a fully integrated, single-supply, high-efficiency switching audio amplifier. It features an innovative module, modulator that eliminates the LC uh, output filter. With typical switching amplifiers, remember we talked about that, you might have to filter the output if it's a switching amplifier. Okay, fine. Uh, and again, you'd really want to read through this. Okay, so what do we got here? So here's the right, right uh, input and left input. So this is showing uh, differential uh, inputs, but we can ground one of these uh, if we wish. And we've got right, we've got left, and it's got kind of a little uh, gain control here. So this doesn't look too bad, all right? So this doesn't look too bad. All right, so let's uh, take a little bit, look here more, and scroll down here a little bit, if the browser will cooperate with us. Okay, and what, I, again, I'm looking for, just kind of a schematic here. So here's the single-ended. Uh, input version that we we're going to kind of use right and so it's very 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 simple all right so I'm liking this and this looks pretty good and notice it's capacitorless outputs on the speaker output so that's cool all right and uh, very simple network here just basically we've got it the power comes in it's bypassed and then it's split uh, on these two supplies and then bypassed again we can uh, do that and improve that a little bit. And here's if you want to um, uh, add a little bit of more flair to it and put these uh, these filters. So these are these are filters here, and then this is also for making measurements. And then uh, this stuff right here is a jumper, so you can kind of short uh, these uh, inputs, and then a switch, so you can select uh, gain select and, and so forth. We're going to look at that gain select in a minute and see how that works. And then uh, this is basically showing the uh, dev kit schematic, all right, and uh, PCB layout. And that's about it. Okay, so you know what? That's not bad. Uh, it's only 1.2 watts, which is a little bit thin. I I'd like it to be a little bit higher, but LM4666 is not bad. LM4666, it's in, you know, it's a buck fifty. So and it's fairly simple. So I kind of like that. And what do we have over here? Now here's another one. And this is LM1877 and LM48325. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this one. This one's cool, but it's got too many pins. Let's look at this one. This LM1877. Let's see what this is talking about, if we like this. All right, this is looking a little bit old school. 1995, I can tell. It's a little bit old. Two watts per channel. All right. And, okay, they show the inside of it. Great. And let's look at a schematic. So this is fairly old. And again, this is, yeah, it's, so it's basically, uh, these are op amps in here, right? These are op amps in here. It's kind of showing you different configurations. Nah, not interested. Not interested. Let's back off that. All right, we got about, yeah, about 20 minutes more. So we want to find a chip so we can do a design. All right, and let's see, this LM4880, direct path, uh, this DRV. Let's take a look at this one, this 4880. All right, it's got very few pins, so it's not going to have a lot of features, I can tell you that. And this is going to probably just be, 
250 milliwatt yeah so yeah this so this is this is not bad this is real very simplistic it's capacitively coupled to both speakers uh, and then capacitively coupled here very simple but no bias control no uh, gain control or whatever okay so I think what we're gonna do uh, because time is always against us here is we're gonna take a look at this LM4666 now obviously we didn't do the, an exhaustive search here uh, and we could just look at those other uh, chips that the other companies SparkFun, Adafruit, Amazon we see are using but we're just trying to do this to show the process okay so LM4666 now what we hope is that uh, the tool so let's go here so we're gonna go to uh, uh, circuit maker and again if you haven't taken the course or section 8 specifically you don't know how to use this yet but if you don't just bear with me so we're gonna uh, I've already created a new project called CC crash course electronics beatbox amp version 1001 uh, whatever version we get done with we'll just have 002 or something like that so if you kind of search for beatbox uh, in my account, you should be able to find this and, and uh, clone it. In any event, <clears throat> right now it has no documents, so let's go ahead and let's add a schematic. We're only going to have time to do the schematic today, uh, but I think that'll be okay. So I'm going to call it CCE and Beatbox Amp. I like to name everything the exact same name. Oops, V1 underscore 001. And is that right, everybody? I think so. Okay, so there's our schematic, and now let's go ahead and let's see if we can find this chip. So I'm going to go up here, and we're going to search for this uh, IC. Let's take some of this off so we have less. Oh, we got lucky. Look at that. All right, so there it is right there. First hit. That's good. Now, which version is this? This is the WSON, and looks like it's always the same. And these different versions of it uh, could mean... Uh, there are different uh, ways that the IC comes. So we'll, we're going to stick to this one right here, which is ac actually the one we're looking at. So let's go place place this. All right. So I can see right now I might need a little bit more room here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say sheet actions. Where is it? All right. And let's go up here and we'll go to project document options. All right. And I can never remember which way these go. So let me try A1. And that's massive. Oops. And so let's try a two. That kind of sh that yeah, that's that's more what I want. I, I like a little bit of space. You know what I mean? When I'm working. Okay. So we got that. So here we go. So we got this. Now let's go back here. Let's go back to our LM4666. Now typically when I do design, I will uh, I will have uh, this uh, document up on another screen. So I have another screen over here. All right. So that, but so you can see it. I'm going to kind of keep it here, and we'll just kind of toggle back and forth as we go here. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's look down here. So here's what our basic design looks like. Uh, you know, fairly simple. Uh, let's go to our single end of design, design reference. And where did it go? Right about here. Okay. All right, so it's making a recommendation of these 0.39 microfarad capacitors. Uh, we've got this input, we got this input, we got this right here, and then we got our outputs, and we got this little network right here. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go steal uh, some parts. So here's a power supply project uh, that I did um, for a previous uh, video or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go steal some parts here. I'm just going to grab these parts right here, and this is the cool thing. Uh, this is a, one of my manufacturing uh, people about an LCD. Uh, one of the cool things about uh, doing electrical design, just like software, you can do things kind of in an object-oriented way, and you can uh, reuse things. So let's see here. Uh, let's go back here. And there we go. OK. And I'm going to paste this here. OK. Now. Uh, we're going to build this all with size 805 uh, components. So let's see, these are 805s. So you can see 805 surface mount component. Now, uh, I talk about this at length. When you're doing design, you don't have to pick the exact part that you're going to use for passives. You can pick a part that has the right size, and then 
as long as it's an 805 or a 603 or a 402 or whatever the size may be, you can later, when you generate your bill of materials, pick the exact manufacturer, the exact part, because I don't want to sit and have exact capacitors, exact resistors. I just want generic, generic stuff. And so in this case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say what I want this thing to be. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to say uh, what I want this to be. And I want this to be 0 0.39 microfarad. Uh, done. Okay, so that's uh, one of these capacitors right here. Now we go back here. All right, so we basically got a VN plus and a VN plus are both going to go to ground through a capacitor. Okay, simple enough. So here we go. So here's one right here. So VN plus right there. I'm going to put that there and then W for wire mode and then I'm going to copy this and notice the reference designator right now are both C4. I don't care. I'm going to fix that later and go to VN plus like that. Let's get our grounds here. So here's our ground, and I kind of like putting things on the same level, so it's kind of symmetrical. So we're going to put our ground here. We're going to put our ground here. <clears throat> All right, so that looks good so far. Now, we've got these V sub DD lines, and if we look, the way that they've got this is we've got a capacitor real close to it, and then we've got kind of the input coming in here with a one microfarad. All right, so I'm going to kind of enhance that a little bit. That's not enough for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to my uh, little power supply design here, and I'm going to steal this ferrite bead. I'm going to steal this ferrite bead first. All right, and then I'm going to come back here. So right now as I'm sitting here, I can hear my dog uh, barking. She just is constantly hungry. I don't care how much she eats. She's just, give me more food. Give me more food. It's supremely annoying. You can't hear it, but I can. All right. And so we're going to go here. And then now what I'm going to do is we're going to be careful with this. I'm going to scoot this over a little bit like this. Now, uh, so electrically, there's one thing. And then when we do the layout, which we're not going to have time to do the layout, right? That's something you can do yourself. We're just designing a circuit. Uh, when you do the layout, uh, you've got to keep notes to yourself and say, put these capacitors close and all that kind of thing, all right? So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually uh, draw these like this. So I'm going to put this up here, and then I'm going to put this up here like this, okay? Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go and uh, get my capacitor here, and I'm going to put a 0 0.1 microfarad. All right. Now, uh, I've said this before, when uh, companies show these designs, they use the bare minimum of everything to make things work, right? So we're not going to use the bare minimum of everything. We're going to kind of, you know, uh, crank things up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is on each of these, on each of these channels, I'm going to use larger capacitors. So I just get, you know, better bypassing and better noise reduction. All right. So that, that's good. So I'm going to take these two, copy them, and I'm going to put them over here because it's the symmetrical design. Again, if you look here, where is it? Kind of, you got capacitor, capacitor, and the whole thing's tied together and a capacitor on the main input. Okay, this is going to be our main input here. So we're going to get there in a minute. Okay. All right. And then we are going to go here, here, to here. Oops. And remember, it's a W puts you in a wire mode here. So I just press W and I can press it, press escape, press escape. That takes me out of it. Now we need to tie these two things together. All right. So to emphasize, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I think that'll, that kind of emphasizes. All right. And then what I'm going to do is the power, we're going to bring the power in. Come here, little ferrite bead. All right. So we're going to bring the power in right here. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to filter it through this ferrite bead. Now we need a uh, power input here. All right, so we're just going to we're going to go steal one of these little power uh, little uh, icons here, and it's just right here. If you just go here, we could say power port here, and then I could select one of these. But I've already got it, so let's just use it. All right, and then now um, this is going to be the power from the output. Uh, from the input to this board. I don't really know what this is going to be called. So uh, it's supposed to be about 5 volts. So we're, we're just going to call this V sub CC. Okay, we're just going to call it V sub CC, and you're going to put that input in. All right? Okay, now I want to put some bypass capacitors here, all right, right on this input. All right, and uh, let's make this nice and pretty. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Okay, and let's tighten that up. Oop, let's zoom back in. 
Okay. All right, and then now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this up a little bit, uh, 47 microfarad. We're just going to put that to 47 microfarad. All right, so this ferrite bead is a high-frequency uh, filter, basically, and this can handle up to an amp, so this is a nice little uh, ferrite bead. All right, so we've got our power coming in. We've got it filtered. Then we've got it kind of bypassed and decoupled here. Then we go down and we split the supplies. We go into V sub DD both ways, and then now I'm going to know when I put this thing together, these two capacitors go next to this pin. These two capacitors go next to this pin. You know, keep that in my head. All right. Now uh, we're looking good here. So let's go ahead and let's save that. And let me say project. Good. Okay. Okay, so now what else do we have to do here? Let's see here. What else do we have to do? Okay, we got our speaker. Now, what are we going to do for our speaker? What are we going to do for our speaker? So we just so there's no capacitors, there's no nothing, which is really good. We just need to literally connect this to a speaker. How are we going to do that? Well, we could just put some pins on the board. So we could do that, um, but we could put a terminal block. Okay. Okay, so uh, we can use terminal blocks, which we can kind of um, connect to, and uh, so again, you could search here to see what's kind of in the library that you can gain access to. Now, I've already kind of done this. Luckily, that's why I've uh, kind of got this design here. And uh, for this one, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, I've already selected these uh, terminal blocks here, which look really cool. Let me show you what they look like. There they are right there. I kind of like those. So we're going to have these terminal blocks here. Then also what we're going to do is in parallel, we're going to put these little headers. So you could plug in with a header or you can go with a terminal block, right? So we're going to kind of do that, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part right here, copy it, and I'm going to put it into our design here, okay? And again, we will mess with uh, all of the uh, labels <coughs> for everything shortly. And now we need a, a two-pin header, which uh, I just showed you was also in here. So I'm just going to steal that. Oops, we're going to steal that, and right here is just a little two-pin header. I'm going to steal that. All right, there's a two-pin header. Okay, all right, so now we're getting someplace. Uh, control, so I'm constantly control saving. Okay, so we look here. What else do we need? We kind of made a little bit better power supply. So we've got our input. Uh, we got our outputs. We're going to deal with the input in a minute. We've got our outputs, are going to, uh, which are going to go to our terminal block uh, or to our... Um, header that we just put in there and just straight to it nothing else okay cool all right and it's just the right out right out left out left out that's it very simple okay so we're gonna go here and we'll go like this and we'll go like this and we will then wire this thing straight in boom and we will wire this one let's go down a little bit like this give a little bit of room here like this and so all right and then this uh, uh, thing right here this is just a label here all right and uh, we're just gonna say uh, we'll just say two pin header all right and uh, what we're gonna do is each one of these is gonna just connect directly to this also all right and let's keep the pins the same so this is um, right two, uh, left two, and right two, and uh, left one, right one. So let's put the one pins on the one, just to be consistent. And that's another thing, when you're doing anything with stereo equipment, uh, or uh, audio stuff, you've got right and left channels, right? So what that means is, if you hook something up in one way, and you flip it, <coughs> audio will be out of phase, right? The speaker will be pushing while the other one's pulling. So be careful, pluses and pluses, minuses and minuses. Labels are important, is what I'm saying, all right? So my uh, electronics teacher back in uh, high school, his name was Kenneth Barron, and he had a story one time about some very expensive equipment that they installed for a, a high school something, uh, some kind of um, show that was going to be in the gymnasium that week and they had it all set up and the audio just sounded horrible they couldn't understand what is going on this is this high-end equipment and then the students said wait a minute maybe we should flip the speakers uh plus to minus minus to plus and they did and then they put them both in phase so both speakers are pushing and pulling at the same time but it was because they had their labels wrong so always kind of be very uh, consistent with things okay all right so that looks good okay and then uh so now i don't need to say what this is i'm going to call this uh, audio out uh, and this is what left, audio out left, right? 
Is that one correct? Good. And this one's audio out left. Oops. And again, you know, um, it may look easy talking and doing this at the same time, but believe me, I'm not. There's nothing I'm editing out here, really. Uh, it's just all in real time, so I'm just kind of doing this as I go. Uh, let's see, this onshore technology. We do need these part numbers on this one. So uh, this one is important to keep this exact uh, part number, this onshore technology. So there it is there. So I can I can lose it right here if I want to. So uh, what I'm going to do is, I, I, you know what, I'm just going to leave that right there. A lot of times I won't leave the part numbers. This is just a generic two pin. Uh, looks like this. Well, it doesn't exactly look like that's what it looks like going through the board. And then these are just going to be the holes in the board, the footprint, which you can put a two pin header in. OK, so that all looks good. OK, so we're getting there. That looks good. Uh, and then uh, we've got this gain select and shutdown. All right. So shutdown is active low, right? So shutdown is active low. And then uh, gain select is up to V sub DD. So um, we are going to for shutdown, we are going to just uh, make this a, kind of a pin header. And uh, maybe we can make it an input, and we'll just kind of pull it high. So for shutdown, let's start off. Let's just pull this high, all right, so that it's not, oops, so it's not shut down. So let's get a couple resistors here. Let me find a resistor. Uh, and you know what? As a matter of fact, let's take this whole piece, because I, uh, I want some kind of power indicator, all right? So right by this power indicator, and uh, so this is a V sub C in. I, you know what? I like that name better. All right, we're going to call it that, 470, LED1, blue LED, that's cool. Now I want this resistor. And now what I'm going to do is up here, so this is a shutdown pin. So on the shutdown pin, I am going to connect it just like this. And we're going to go to V sub CC, and we're going to pull this thing up. And uh, we can, you know, there's a lot of different ways that people like to design things. Let's put this here. I, I kind of don't like to put things in between things. I'd rather pull it out so we can, let's just pull this whole little pin out like that. We can do that. Uh, or we could put it up right here. That's another option. We can do that. So let's do this. And again, you know, uh, I don't need to do all this, but I'd like you to see what I'm thinking. Let's see if we've got enough room here. Yeah, that's okay. And let's move this over here a little bit. Great, no thanks. Doesn't work. There we go. All right. And then we're going to move this back here. And what I'm going to do is, so I'm pressing space bar, which kind of does all these rotations. And it's not going to be, uh, it's not being cooperative. That's exactly what I didn't want it to do. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this. Now I'm going to take this resistor and I'm going to rotate it. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to put this gain select here, like this. Now I'm going to put V sub CC here. Okay, now this pin right here, this is going to be our control. All right, so we're going to we're going to bust that out at some point. But now we've got this thing uh, doing what we want. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, that was on the shutdown control. We're going to do the gain select uh, momentarily once we read how to use the thing. Okay, we need these input capacitors, so let's go do this. So I'm going to copy that and rotate that. And where are our inputs? Here's our input minus. So there's our input minus. And where's our other input minus? Right there. OK. So we're going to do that. And they're saying use the same value. All right, fine. OK, so this needs to be uh, brought up a little bit. So let's go here. Let's bring this up just a hair. Good. OK, and then we're going to bring this up here. And again, there's you know a lot of different ways to do a layout, and as you do this, you can kind of clean it up, do things differently, you know whatever suits you. Okay, now uh, we need our input, so let's go back here. So we, basically, it's input to ground, input to ground. So we're gonna uh, do this exact same thing. So I'm gonna take uh, one of these guys right here. Uh, we're gonna do. Oops. We are going to flip it around. All right, and. We're going to do the exact same thing. So on pin one, that's going to be the input. All right. And pin two is going to be the ground. We're going to get a ground here. So that's going to connect to ground for us. All right. And, you know, you can do this also. There's nothing wrong with doing this, putting a ground like that. You can do that, right? There's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. 
All right, so we're going to do this. And we're also on the inputs, we're also going to put these uh, uh, headers. So we kind of have the ability to uh, header in. So we just have to give ourselves enough room. All right. Now, on this right here, uh, there's no plus and minus here. So we can't make these the same, but we're going to make the input uh, consistent. So whatever we do, so pin 1 is uh, going to go here. All right, and then pin two is going to be the ground on both of these. All right, so pin one is the input, pin two is going to be the ground. So we can tie these together like this, straight down to ground, and we're going to go like that. Okay, there we go. So we have both inputs. You can use this one or this one, and then it's going to go to our input. Okay, so that looks good. So let's just go copy this block. All right, we're going to copy that block. We'll put it right there, and then we're going to uh, go here. We're going to go here, and then we're going to pop this up and pop this up and go like that so that looks good now this is not audio out left anymore this is audio in audio in and I think is it right this yeah this one's right audio in right and this is audio in audio in left okay let's move this out of the way put it right there oops put it right there and again, you know, you can sit here and uh, make this really, really pretty, right? And, and label things, kind of move things around. But uh, we're doing pretty good. Okay, uh, let's put a uh, let's put a big label on the whole thing. Let me get a big font. Boom! I'll just steal that. Lots of stealing. Good. We'll come up here and just put this here. And we're just going to say uh, stereo. Uh, Audio amplifier, cool. All right, and what's it called? Oh, I gave it a name, didn't I? I called it the Beatbox Amp, and I'll put a dash, okay? Beatbox Amp, stereo auto amplifier, looks good. Okay, all right, so we're getting there. So we got the outputs, that's done. Uh, this DAP, uh, we gotta see what that does. We've got this um, signal right here, uh, which is gonna be pulled up, so it will not be shut down, it'll be running. Uh, so this signals right here. So now let's go ahead now for kicks. Let's just use a label here and we're gonna go here I don't want to use I want to use a port Label I prefer these so uh, Let's pull this out just the oops pull this out just a little bit Okay, and now let's get a port label here okay and Okay, and what are we gonna call this this is shut down so we're gonna say uh, shut down and we're going to put a little n on it meaning it's uh, active low okay shut down n active low fine and then you, so remember you can run wires all over the place or you can put labels on things and then wherever the same labels are those nets will connect right so we don't necessarily have to run wires everywhere and make it a super big mess but I, but things like this the audio outputs the audio inputs you know they're very close to the chip so we might as well uh, put those uh, uh, as wires design those as wires Okay, so we've got our power LED, things are looking good. Uh, and now, so, okay, so now we're going to figure out what this whole gain select uh, business. Let's go read about this, okay? So, gain select and gain select, okay. All right, so let's see what it says. Okay. So it looks like you only have two selections. So if you put it a uh, high, you get 6 dB. If you put it low, you get 12 dB, decibels of gain, right? And we've talked about a uh, de decibel uh, measure for power gain, for voltage gain and power gain. It's either 20 log, uh, 20 log of the uh, ratio of the input to output, or output to input, excuse me, or it's 10 log. Uh, so if it's power gain, it's 20 log the ratio, and if it's uh, voltage gain, it's 10 log the ratio. It's just a measurement, a logarithmic scale of gain if, if you haven't taken the class. Uh, so anyway, I think it looks like that, yeah, you just selected high and low, huh? So let's go through here. All right, gain select function. Let's read this. Uh, I'm not going to read it out loud to you. You kind of, if you can, hopefully you can see this with me. Let's just kind of read through here. Huh. Okay. So it looks like uh, it looks like this pin high, 
high or low, it uh, selects the gain of 6 or 12 dB. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to pull it up. We're going to pull this up to V sub dd, and then we're going to make it an input. Okay. So we're going to we're going to literally kind of copy this uh, circuit here. Hopefully we have enough room. So we're going to do this uh, same circuit twice, and we're going to have kind of an external input that controls the gain. All right. That's one way to do it. Uh, so let's see. Can we can we scooch this over a little bit? Give us just a little bit more room. Uh, you know what? I think yeah, I think we got enough room here. Let's do this. Okay. So oh, uh, also on this pull up, let's fix this. Let's make that 10k. All right, for that pull up. And then let's go ahead and we're going to copy this. And do we have enough room? So if we put it there, we don't have enough room. So let's go ahead and let's scoot this whole IC over here. And we'll put that there. Be very careful when you're scooching things. Right, because you don't want some. See, like what just happened right there. Look at that. Oh, yeah. You got to be careful. Um, all CAD programs are DOS programs, basically. So they're very old and they have really weird artifacts. You got to watch what you're doing. Be very careful. Watch what you're doing. Okay, so that seemed to work. So now I'm going to grab this. Okay, and right about there. I don't like things touching, so I'm going to move this over one. Come on. Grab the wrong thing. There we go. Okay, good. So now I'm going to put this right here, and this is going to go here, and this is going to go uh, to this pull up here. Now, uh, this pull up might have to be a little bit uh, lower. I don't. It, I, it probably doesn't require any current. We could look in the data sheet to see how much current this is going to source or sync when we select gain, but we'll put it at 10k, and hopefully that'll be enough to hold it. All right, and we're going to make this an input. Okay, so I'm going to call this gain, and it's, is it just called gain select? Yeah, so we're going to call it gain select. All right, and now, okay, so then uh, let's go here, and uh, IO type, we're just going to call it bidirectional. It's not bidirectional, but I like the symbol. All right, I don't, I don't take the time to make all these different ports, inputs or outputs or this or that, because it's just too much work. It drives me nuts. Okay. All right, so that's that. So now both of these will be pulled up. So it'll be in the gain mode when it's high. So if you go here uh, and we say um, uh, for differential gain of 6 dB should be permanently connected to V sub dD or driven to logic high. For differential gain of 12, it should be to ground. All right, so the bottom line is if it's a low, it's going to be higher gain. So we're going to put it in lower gain mode so it doesn't blow something up. All right, so that's good. One last thing, these colors are driving me crazy. So the fill color, I'm just going to make this support... We'll make it this little blue color, and we're going to make the border color a black color, and we're going to make the text color a black color. Let's see how this looks. All right, that doesn't look very good, so let's make the uh, text color, where the text color go? Let's make the text color white. Okay, that's better. All right, just, you know, everything doesn't have to be completely ugly. And uh, was it that one? And the text color was white. And again, I'm just showing you things as we're doing this. Also, the border is black, and hmm. and you know what? Well, you know what? Let's just let's just make these different color to represent that there's you know different things. How about let's make this one kind of this green or aqua color? Now it's a little bit too much, even for me. Let's make it kind of a dark. Make it this brown color, kind of. Eh, whatever. All right. Uh, so now we're getting there. What time? We, okay, we're, we're doing okay. We're about an hour in. Uh, let's see here. So what are we missing? So we've got this gain select. Now let's put this out. Let's port this out uh, to um, uh, some, uh, some kind of control port. So we could do the same thing. Okay, so let's think about this. We could do the same thing with, uh, we could do the same thing with these ports, uh, these terminal blocks. Uh, and so, th so that we could control this externally, because maybe you want to plug this into something and control the gain, or we could control it with a switch. We could control it with a switch, right? Uh, now for shutdown, so, all right, so what I'm going to do is this, and, and again, this is just design, it's, you know, whatever you want. So let's do this. Let's, um, we're not going to put these to terminals, but we're going to put them to a header. Let's put them both to a header so they could externally be controlled if you want to control it. 
all right? The thing will not be shut down in default, so it'll be running. The gain will be low, and we'll put it to a header, and if you want to do something with it, you can through the control of the header, okay? So let's go ahead and let's do this. We're going to go here, and we're going to, uh, well, you know what? Let's, yeah, let's do this. So let's just show the use of these port pins, all right? So now I'm going to put them right here. And then what I'm going to do is these are basically wherever these are, we'll connect to these lines here. So I'm going to take one of these guys and I'm going to go here and then I'm just going to put this right here. So this is, uh, and we're going to call this uh, gain slash uh, shutdown, we'll call it shutdown. And these are just notes to us, right? This doesn't get printed on anything. All right. And so now we're going to make uh, pin one is going to be the shutdown pin and pin two is going to go to this. Okay, so those two go there uh, so that you can access them from the external world. Now, on the gain select, I also want to have the ability, maybe with a switch, to change what this thing is. So let's add a switch, okay? So let's add a little uh, slide switch. And I think, yeah, where am I? See this little slide switch right here? This is a really small switch. There's a company called eSwitch, which makes a lot of cool little switches. So we're just going to use this, okay? If I can get it to select, good. All right. Okay, so we've got our little slide switch right here. And we are going to uh, basically, in one position, it's going to turn uh, uh, the switch on. It's going to turn it off in the other position. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to ground this thing. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to ground it here. All right. And then uh, in the other position, it's going to do this. So uh, when it's in one position, it'll do nothing. So it'll just get pulled up high up here. And then once it's in the other position, it'll ground it. And then... At worst case, we'll have a circuit with a 10K uh, dra dragging current through here, so it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, so now, what is this thing called? This switch here, let's let, let's put a little name on this. So this is an EG1217. So we can leave that label, what that is right there, the value of it, so we know what the, you know, the part number is on. Because we're going to use a specific switch, just like this specific part right here. But um, let's put a little label on it. And what I like to do is... Uh, do this and let's just uh, shoot this text down to about uh, 12 point uh, font. Uh, whenever you do anything uh, messing with fonts or whatever, this tool Circuit Maker, I think it goes to the cloud and downloads stuff. I'm not quite sure because fonts are already loaded on the computer, but I, I don't know what it does, but it seems like it's going to the cloud for some reason and downloading things, who knows. So it takes it about 30 seconds. There we go. All right, and let's uh, small on this font, maybe to size 14. All right, that's good. All right, and then we're going to put this right here. And so what is this, everybody? This is the, what is this? Uh, gain uh, select 6 slash 12 dv, okay? And we're going to have to know which way is which, and we would do that on the PCB itself. We would uh, put some writing so we could say 6 dv or 12 dv on the PCB. All right, so let's move this a little bit out of our way. All right, cool. Okay, looking good, looking good. Uh, let's see here. Now, what else do we have? Okay, uh, we've got power. We've got to bring the power into this thing. So right now we're bringing uh, the signals in on terminal blocks. We're bringing the signals out on terminal blocks. Let's go ahead and bring the power in on a terminal block also. All right, why not? Okay, so uh, we're going to just, we're going to kind of bring the power in. Uh, typically I bring the power in the top left of a design. Okay, so I'm going to bring it in right here. All right. Just like that, as simple as that. And uh, pin two here is ground, pin two here is ground. So just be consistent. I'm going to make this pin two ground. Again, it's not going to matter, but I just like consistency. The less you have to remember when you're doing electronics, the better. So if you have conventions, better. All right. And then here's V sub C in. So here's where V sub C in is going to tie to. Now, if there were other devices on here, I would have some filtering on this input, but there's only one chip and it's already got its own filter, so we're just going to bring that in there, and that's that. Okay, let's see. All right, what do we got here? All right, so we have, uh, we've got our input here. We've got our other input here. We can come in both ways on a terminal block or on uh, uh, headers. We've got our... Uh, uh, filtering capacitor here, which is uh, basically going to block DC, 
and where is our kind of reference design, our crude reference design, which is the bare minimum usually. There it is. All right, so we're doing this one. All right, we've uh, got that hooked up. We've got capacitors to ground. So, th so this is very important. A lot of times when you have a differential input and you want to use it in single-ended mode, be careful. Don't just hook the other end to ground. A lot of times you have to hook it through a capacitor. All right, be careful of that so that uh, AC can pass through here. All right, and those are 0.39. Is that the recommended one? And those may be wrong. There may be uh, better uh, values to make those at, maybe 0 0.47, 0 0.22, uh, maybe one microfarad. So we play with that in our design. Okay, uh, we've got our filter, which we did our better filter up here, which is a much more robust filter. It's got a high frequency ferrite B, then it's got really good bypassing on the inputs. So we've got a stable power supply, then we split it off, and then we bypass with a high and a low, so we get uh, low noise, and then we also have uh, 10 microfarads for a uh, uh, charge, so we can get uh, that current when we need it. And then gain select, we just know that it's high and low. Shutdown is low, so we're going to pull it up high, so in default the thing will be running. The outputs, no magic there. It's a direct connection, which is what we like about this IC. Okay, <clears throat> so that is that. And that is about it. And let's see. That's it. We got our LED. We're all good to go. Okay, so now one problem we have is all the reference designators are all over the place. So now you can let the system do it. So uh, let's go look at that. And, uh, you know, I use so many tools, everybody, uh, an enormous amount of tools because I do software and hardware and firmware and mechanical that, uh, you know, if I don't use something for a week, I forget uh where certain things are. Okay, so now what we're looking for is we are looking for uh, to be able to label all of the uh, reference designators. So we're looking for that uh, option. So it's not here in view, definitely not there. Uh, in home, so there's net label here, uh, component, junction, directives, no, that's not it. Uh, round, it's not here. In project, uh, commit, add existing variance, templates, no, it's not there. Uh, tools, 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 number sheet, yes, this is where it is, it's in tools. Okay, so under annotate, if we go here and we say uh, annotate uh, schematic, that is reset 26 changes and that is not what I wanted. Uh, reset duplicates. Okay, reset duplicate. So that's what that, okay, so that reset. There is a way to annotate the entire thing. Let's see, annotate schematic, annotate schematic quietly, force annotate on all schematics. Yes, okay. All right, there it is. So anyway, so that went through and uh, annotated everything and made sure that we don't have any duplicates. Now, you can also go through manually, which is what I prefer to do, and just go through manually in kind of a sensible way if you have, you know, hundreds or thousands of parts, a lot of times it's a lot of work, but a lot of times I like to keep, uh, you know, my capacitors, resistors, and blocks so I know where they are in the design. But anyway, this looks like it did it right, and we're okay. So T1, T2, T5, uh, T3, T4 kind of jumped over there. We've only got one resistor here, R2, R3. We've got one uh, FV1. The capacitors all look pretty good. Uh, so anyway, so that's not bad. Okay, so we'll, we'll stick with that. Okay. All right. Now we're, we're ready, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this project, and then I'm going to commit the project, and this is the first time that I've done it, so it's all good to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on here, and we're going to say Compile, all right? And as we compiled, uh, we, we saw no errors, so there's no you know problems with it, all right? So that is it. So that is our schematic for our amplifier. So what's the next thing? We're not going to do in this video. We don't have uh, time to do it. But uh, uh, the next thing that we would do is we would go to uh, our project here, and we would say add new to project, and we would say add uh, PCB, right? And then we would name this PCB, and then uh, we can go ahead and do this real quick, but we're not going to finish it. We just don't have time. Uh, beat box amp and uh, version 1. 001. I always, you know, I always feel like I'm keeping you guys after class, you know, uh, and I know everyone likes to get done. Okay, so there we go. All right. OK, 
Okay, now we've got this, and now we're going to go back here. So we got this thing right here, and then what we do is, is uh, let's recompile this one more time. And then what I'm going to do is, we're going to uh, save the project. We're going to commit the project. This is just me making sure everything is all hunky-dory. Okay, now if we go uh, here, there's nothing there, right? So then what you do is, uh, you can go up here to Home, and then you go to Project, and then you go Import Changes uh, from CC Beatbox, da 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 and then this is going to push all of this stuff. So we say Validate, ah, <laughs> validate Changes, and we say Execute Changes, and of course in Section 8, is a whole class, a whole course, as big as a whole course on PCB design. All right, then we say close, and then all of our parts are right here. So then we would just start placing them in a sensible way. So maybe we can do that in another video, and then if we want the 3D view, we can go here, all right, and we can see what they kind of look like, exactly what we expect, okay? So everything is as it should be. But what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to see the process. So here's an amplifier. So this should work. We got good power. We got power coming in. We got our right input. We got our left input. We got our left output. We got our right output. We got different ways of getting uh, the signal out, different ways of getting the signal in. In default, the chip will be enabled. The gain will be selected at 6 dB, or we can control it with our little switch here. Uh, to switch it into 12 dB if we want to get some more uh, gain out of it. And uh, that's it. That's it, everybody. So there you go. So there is an amplifier in real time, how my thought process works, a, a, a fraction of what the things that you have to do. You can look at what other people have done. You can go look for ICs at different vendors and go through them all. Now, if we we're really going to do this as a professional product, we'd spend a weekend just looking for chips, right? Then we'd maybe spend a week or two evaluating some chips, maybe get some dev boards, maybe two or three weeks, right? Then we've kind of say, hey, we really like this chip. It's got a good price. It's really available. Then we'd build some prototypes of it like we're doing here, lay out the PCB, send it out, evaluate it, test it, verify it, and then say like, this is cool. I'm going to make a product out of this. Bam, right? And that would be it. So... That's it. So what you can do is you can look for uh, this project, CCE, under Beatbox Amp, underscore V1, underscore 001, right, Beatbox Amp, under my account uh, on Circuit Maker, if you want to download this and uh, finish it up or play with it or make your own version of it. And I'm curious, I don't remember using this chip, but I mean... You know, I, who knows? I, maybe I have. Um, but uh, I'm curious to see how this, uh, how this works and if it's a, a nice little amplifier. So anyway, that's it. So I will see you in the next lecture. Bye.